Hi, my name's Jazdeep Tara and uh, I was actually born in Nairobi in East Africa. We moved to um, England in 1975. That was because my granddad wanted to move here um, because his younger son was there. First of all, we came to Leicester for three months and lived with uh, my grandparents. And, uh, and then three months later, we moved to Watford and we lived there for about six months on rent. Uh, in the meanwhile, my, my mum was looking for uh, a property for us to move into and, you know, it took a long time to find something suitable. So um, they fi finally found something in, in Luton, which was halfway between Leicester, where her parents are, and Watford and Rickmansworth, where my dad's side of the family is. So I basically had all my education in Luton. Um, there was... It was tougher in those days because we, we had quite a lot of racial abuse as well. So, um, yeah, my dad used to go out to work and we used to have guys coming to kick our fence and door down. But anyway, slowly that, that we overcame that because um, the guys got older and obviously they were trained by Asian people. And uh, after that, um, I did my A-levels, went to uni in, in Luton as well. And um, after uh, I finished, uh, I decided to get married um, to somebody that uh, I did like for a long time, but it, it didn't sort of offset. And then from when I got married, I've been in Leicester since 1991. Um, my husband and I have been together nearly 24 years. Um, we've got three daughters, Simran, Amrit um, and Povel, who's the youngest. Uh, I've worked on and off. I worked in the um, Towers Hospital for about nine years. Then I worked in the children's school for about two years. And then after that, I found my ideal job, which is working as a educational care officer, working with children with learning difficulties. And I absolutely found my niche there, <laughs> you know, because I loved working with, with kids that, well, nobody else wanted to work with. And I, I got quite far with them. And, you know, I'll give you an example, a girl I worked with, she was mute when I started working with her. And five years down the line, she was shouting, screaming. Obviously, she'd say the odd word. I mean, she'd have a full conversation with her parents at home, but not at, at the school. But she, this was a child that didn't want to come to school and had no interest. But obviously, we worked together and, and, and we got there in the end. Um, but unfortunately, my husband had a, a stroke in 2006, um, which was quite bad, but I, I still carried on working. But then I kept finding him unconscious at home. Um, and then I had to give up my job in uh, 2008 to look after him. Um, after that, it was difficult to not be able to go to work and have all the contacts, so you get quite isolated. But I became a full-time carer then. Um, then just concentrated on caring for him, caring for the children. After that, um, on the 24th of February 2014, I was diagnosed with um, breast cancer. I went in prepared, um, thinking, yes, I have got it. But to be told on your first appointment that you've got breast cancer and it's very unlikely that it's not was quite difficult. But then I mentally prepared myself and I had to go in after, to get the results of the biopsy a week later. And I was told, yes, you've got stage two breast cancer. And uh, the nurse took me into the room and says, oh, it was somebody called out and she says, oh, we need to fill in the forms for you to do a CT scan. But I'd said I'd already had the CT scan that had been arranged by the consultant and it came quite quickly. So she went back to the consultant and uh, she said, uh, OK, you've got stage four cancer, not stage two, because the cancer had actually spread into my spine. But at that point, they told me it was on top of my bones in my spine so I thought okay fair enough but at that point I broke down because you know I was prepared for the breast cancer and I knew that you know you could survive that and things would would be a lot better